This video will provide a brief overview of wireless systems and how they work. Wireless microphone systems are comprised of three main components, the microphone, the transmitter, and the receiver. The microphone is the most familiar component and is what translates sound into an electrical signal to be distributed through an audio system. Microphone input devices come in a variety of form factors. However, the two most common wireless microphones are handheld and lavalier variants. The microphone capsule is typically protected by a metal grill or mesh of some design. In most cases, this grill should not be removed. Exposing and or manipulating a microphone capsule may cause serious damage and could void the manufacturer's warranty. The transmitter is responsible for converting the audio signal from the microphone into a radio signal, or RF, and broadcasting that signal. Transmitters are available in two basic types. One type, called a handheld wireless microphone, features a transmitter built into the handle of the microphone, resulting in a wireless microphone that is only slightly larger than a standard wired microphone. The other most common style of transmitter is referred to as a body pack or belt pack transmitter and is a small box roughly the size of a pack of cards. All wireless transmitters require a battery of some kind in order to operate. Pro tip! Handheld microphones almost always have the transmitting antenna located near the bottom of the handle. Avoid wrapping your hands around the bottom of a handheld transmitter. Since the human body absorbs radio frequencies, wrapping your hand around the transmitting antenna will greatly reduce its effectiveness. The receiver picks up the radio signal broadcast by the transmitter and converts it back into a usable audio signal. The output of a receiver is electronically identical to a standard microphone signal and can be connected using traditional microphone inputs. Most modern professional wireless systems are true diversity receivers. This means that they use two separate antennas spaced a short distance apart and typically two separate tuners as well. Circuitry inside the receiver automatically selects the better of the two signals, or in some cases, a blend of both. This signal significantly reduces the chance of losing a connection between the transmitter and the receiver, or what is commonly referred to as RF dropout. Pro tip! While it is true that a transmitter can broadcast a signal to multiple receivers, wireless receivers can only receive a single transmission at a time. Think of a transmitter like a small radio tower, and a wireless receiver like a car radio. Multiple cars can tune into a single radio station and listen without any problems, but a person driving a car can only tune into one radio station at a time. Similarly, if two nearby radio towers begin transmitting their radio stations on the same channel, they would interfere with each other and result in neither station working properly. Wireless transmitters and receivers work much the same way. If you want to use two wireless transmitters, you will need to make sure you have two wireless receivers as well. And each wireless unit will need to be on its own channel. Some wireless systems are referred to as dual or quad systems. This refers to a number of receivers that are housed together in a desktop or rack-mounted unit. Dual systems have two receivers housed together, while quad systems have four. However, the same principles apply. Each receiver can only receive a single transmission at a time. So a dual system can receive up to two transmitters at a time, while a quad system can receive up to four transmitters at a time. While dual and quad systems will typically share a pair of antenna, each receiver will have its own audio outputs. If you wish to learn more about wireless microphone systems, please visit our website for more instructional videos like this, or feel free to call or email us.